Hi, my name is David Christensen. I'm a librarian at the Seattle Public Library. The Seattle Public Library is on Indigenous land. These are the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Duwamish people. In this video, we'll discuss visual principles and properties. Two terms I'm going to focus on are Gestalt laws and something called pre-attentive processing. The term Gestalt comes from early 20th century psychology that recognized that humans naturally perceive objects as organized patterns and objects. Gestalt principles of how we perceive patterns can be important to data visualization. Let's have a look at the six principles briefly. There is the law of similarity. Our brains tend to make connections between elements with a similar design. In this case, we can perceive black dots or gray dots connected to one another and also separate from the other colored dots. With the law of proximity, elements that are closer together in design are often linked in our minds. Here we have the black dots, but maybe now perceive two distinct groups. With the law of enclosure, objects that appear to have a boundary around them are perceived as a group. Here, a gray polygon enclosing a group of black dots creates a sense of connection. Here is another basic example where bar graphs are bounded by a box in a way that makes them seem connected. In the law of closure, structures are perceived as closed, complete, and regular whenever there is a way that we can reasonably interpret them as such. Instead of seeing two lines, it is possible you perceive a circle that is almost closed in a square that is almost closed. Here is another example with longitudinal data where we are missing values. We perceive connection even in the absence of visualizing that. Perhaps something like this with a single line instead of two lines. With the law of continuity, objects that are aligned together or appear to be a continuation of one another are perceived as a group. Bar chart lines, for example, are considered a group when aligned next to one another. With the law of connection, objects that are connected, usually by a line, are perceived as a group. Here are a few examples where lines connecting dots create a connection. Gestalt principles come in handy when laying out visual elements in a data visualization. Another related concept is the idea of pre-attentive processing. Let me go ahead and demonstrate what this is before giving the term a definition. Let's have a look at this long number and count all of the fours that you see. Let me give you a second. You can pause the video for a thorough count. Okay, let's try it again with the color red introduced. How much easier is it to count the fours now that they have been highlighted? It's almost instantaneous. The phenomena that happens when we add visual information to highlight or differentiate stimuli is often called pre-attentive processing. It's called pre-attentive because it happens in microseconds before we can even form a thought about what we're seeing. Here's another example of pre-attentive processing. Again, it uses change of color to allow us to pre-attentively process. If I ask you to look for the red circle, this task is quite easy because the shape has been manipulated in a way that is also pre-attentive. But if you try to find the red circle amongst a set of distractors, the process becomes attentive or serial. You essentially have to evaluate each single icon separately to see if it meets the criteria of both red and circle. The power of pre-attentive processing is diminished or entirely eliminated when you have two conflicting styles of visual representation. Here are the different attributes that have been found to be pre-attentive when used in isolation. We've already talked about color and shape, but there are also other ways to manipulate, including orientation, width, size, among other elements. This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts. 
It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.